A big, big welcome to you, Sagittarius. So today we have a full moon. And of course, in some parts of this world, it's in Scorpio and in some parts it's in Sagittarius. And on top of it, there is a lunar eclipse, a full lunar eclipse, and it lasted 14 minutes. And you are the 14th card, Sagittarius, right? So I take this as a sign to give you the full moon. Right, because also opposite you, the sun is in Gemini, and Gemini is the lovers, and Gemini is opposite of you. So I made the decision to give you, and particularly Scorpio already had a full moon in the month before, because that's uh, Scorpio is connected with Taurus. So quickly, the lovers, right? We have the Hermetic Tarot, Edgar Wade, and Alistair Crowley. Both of them were in this brotherhood and created their own tarot deck then here we have ecstasy we have this like extreme beautiful connection between a male and a female that is first and foremost within you happening and then of course in a relationship and here um herman handel why i include his uh, tarot is because he has a reconciliation between the jewish and the german which is the rune alphabet and the Hebrew alphabet because he was saved as a soldier from a Jewish soldier. Right, big story here that he is uh, putting into his tarot. My card that is now for Gemini, the lovers is the pigeon pose in extreme opening because Gemini, the arm and the hands are reaching back to the feet, to the subconscious, which is what uh, Edgar Wade says, right, here is the conscious, the subconscious looking up to the higher conscious and the higher conscious looks to both. So the conscious looking at the subconscious and the conscious, the subconscious looking up is literally told in this just one position, right? So it's inside of you that you create this opening and then the hexagram, the most perfect sacred geometric form is appearing in that that the rose is growing in the center of day and night right this is where the center is this is where the uh, equinox the spring and the fall equinox are and then of course the days are getting either longer or shorter so that's how i um are showing this difference right you uh, temperance, right, or sometimes also called in Alistair Crowley, uh, art, right, which I kind of think is very interesting because it's art to put two extreme opposites like water and fire together. The tent pole, Samek, you can see literally this white angel here, and the two people, right, that we have seen here standing in front of the tree of knowledge and in, 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 stand in front of the tree of uh, seeds, right, or the fruit, um, have now become just the two of cups. And we are mixing it, constantly mixing an alchemical mixture. Here it's a little bit like there is witchcraft happening. And also up here it shows that the darkness it's going towards the um sign of capricorn right it's getting dark and darker and the darkest night is done on the 21st of december here it's art here he is also mate half woman half man here in the medicine it's very beautiful very simple melting it's called not temperance it's melting the holy shine above her and also here in Herman Handel he shows very beautiful a lot of amazing symbolisms inside of this card and I will of course get into that when I do the video just for temperance card explaining all these intricate details that these cards have in them so here you are, right, bending forward, going deep within, 
uh, finding within that connection to the center, to the hexagram, to this cross, where the crossing is, where spirit and matter and time and space are crossing, I then added a second one where I wanted to for you to see that of course here is the longest night and the shortest day. Here is the crossing, right? And here are the angel is up here shining the light down to these people that are bending forward, that are bowing down in front of each other, one red and one blue, right? That's for you, my dear Sagittarius. So, if you're born between the uh, November 11th and December 11th, you are, of course, the classical Knight of Wands. You're the only one that horse goes up. You are growing. You want to experience life. You are going fire and fire, right? You have two fire elements coming together. Here you are, the eagle, the totem, or the clan of your family is connected to this eagle and you fly high and see above all that is really connecting us to a higher spiritual level. Your Krishna, in the Hainal Tarot, this little god is a child god and he is just a trickster and he's cute and he's sweet and he plays his flute. As you can see, very charismatic. So you, Sagittarius, are connected to the ninth house. Ninth house is philosophy. And philosophy doesn't come easy to you at first. For some reason, you're a little bit like philosophy. <laughs> right? But then eventually in time you will get the hook or the hang of it, right? And you will notice that this is something that you want to uh, understand. You, because you're the element fire, you're very energetic and enthusiastic. We like to eat protein on days like this and we're connected to the nervous system. So I'm not shuffling anymore. I split it in three. All right, then I mix it one more time and then I split it in two and whatever is up here I will take this card. You are like I said a leader, a philosopher, um, searcher and you're free spirit, right? You want to be free. This is what you love, right? You are very, you have a sense of humor, which is very funny. Okay. You got the number one day and night, right? So it's almost like, yes, there is a moon. You see, the moon is saying, yes, this is your moon eclipse and the sun. Sun in Gemini, moon in Sagittarius. And yes, here she sits and is looking at us, holding the sun and having the moon behind her, not knowing that the moon is behind her, but somehow she understands the connection between them. And one is beginning one is connected always a little bit to the magician. So the words here are doubts, fears, important decisions are coming, a little unsecure. In her hands she holds the sun and behind her is the moon. And even though she is very connected to the universe, she seems a little unsure. A very important decision is in ahead of her. 
and she doesn't know which one she's supposed to choose. What is happening within her? Does she is she afraid of um, consequences? That if I choose one, are coming at to her. We all come in our life to a point where we have to make a decision, and sometimes we fight against it and do not want to let go of maybe the other one. <laughs> Sometimes we're even afraid of it, even of the future, and we don't know where we belong to. But after the darkness comes the light. And this card is saying trust. Trust yourself. Your heart uh, will help find help and follow the wisdom and in the end everything will be fine. So. These 14 minutes that the moon is covered by the earth, by her, and the sun cannot reach, is what this card is saying, right? You are for a moment unsure of which decision you should take, which way you should take, which path you should take. And let's see what the tarot is saying. I do the same here, I take only six cards, right? Of course, if you want to ever do a private reading with me, I will take nine cards. And we will, of course, go into the details. So, what decision you need to take? Let's see what the Tarot is saying. I split it again now in two and I will take from the top of the deck directly the cards. Queen of Swords. She's looking for you. What decision you should take? <laughs> it's almost like this young girl is saying, you know what, let me have a look. You yourself become you go so high, right? Because you are the only horse that goes up, right? Alistair Crawley made you even more go up. And of course, you are the ego. You go up, and when you go up, you can see clearer, right? And you're in this, sitting on this balloon, but nevertheless, the balloon is attached to the tree. The balloon itself is a house. And in here are four birds. And one, the fifth bird, is sitting in her hand. The number five is coming here for you. The number 14, one bird in her hand and four birds here in the circle. How beautiful is that, right? So it's saying you are going to just take one and that will be the right one. There is no right and wrong. There is no right and wrong, right? What is the, the, the moon because it's dark in its own? Wrong. Is the sun because it holds the light? Is it right? No. Both of them are just opposite. But you will find one, right? One decision that you can take and it will be the right one, always. So don't worry, just take a decision. <laughs> and you did. You have the King of Swords and the Queen of Swords. And yes, you took one decision and it's the one that comes from the right eye. Because the bird decided to go to the right eye. And the right eye is, yes, not the heart but the mind. So you will take the decision from the mind. It's okay. Sometimes we need to take the decision from the mind and not always from the heart. Know that whatever decision you take, it is the right one. But, <laughs> so you left four down here and now the four come back in the four of 
cups. Right? Have a look. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The fifth one in her hand. Right? Four of cups. And of course, it's saying God keeps giving you beautiful energy, keeps giving you again and again. Now it's in the uh, eye of the beholder. Do you see a protection or do you see that this goose is protecting her or is it putting a shadow on her? It's up to you, right? We could think, well, she holds the umbrella with the four colors of the four elements and it could be she's in the shadow it could be she's protected from the sun how do you see it how do you see it is entirely up to you how do you want to proceed because here the intuitive eye is looking at this and saying maybe I should have taken the other decision now, you always know you take the right decision. Three of cups. So you go back down from four to three. And the three, the four is um, moon in cancer and the three is mercury in cancer. Looking at the fact that you maybe thought you took the wrong decision lets you finally then make the right decision and that makes you happy so because you came from the mental state and not from the heart but god was giving you right these are three of cups and god gives you a fourth cup here are the three of cups so in a way it's more important for you to make the decision from your heart. Then you get the six of wands and that is Jupiter in Leo and that's success. Right? But you realized something here that you made this decision with the mind was not making you happy and that made you realize you know what I take the decision from the heart. As simple as that. Sometimes by taking the risk by taking the decision, because you are bringing here the female and the male aspect of this couple together, like the sun is in Gemini, right? You're bringing it together. And you know when you bring it together, these two can bow down to each other. So you're bringing this energy together. And then you realize, okay, I'm taking a decision from the masculine part. The feminine was looking out sending out the information you took a decision finally from the left side because the bird is on its um on its right side sorry you took a decision from the right side from the mental that didn't make you happy and because you realized right away it didn't make you happy you were able to go back down and say you know what no this doesn't make me happy. I want to be back here. I want to be here. And three and then goes to six. Right? The success is happening. You will move forward and be strong and come even into the sun in Aries. Right? So the three and the three is covering. Sorry. Three and three. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> In the picture sometimes it looks different right so you realized something this made you happy and now you can plan yeah right your next adventure you can plan through the three you can plan to develop or to active again start a new project because you know you found your inner strength again right the three and the three is six in the center. See that? So you're learning a lesson here, a big lesson that no matter what decision you take, right? It's good to take a decision. Sometimes it's even good to take a decision that is a makes you afraid, right? Like she says here.
doubts, right? When you have doubts, when you're afraid of making a decision, then take both decisions. Imagine both. Imagine the feminine one and imagine the masculine one. But then you realize, right? It's not making you happy. Always the one from the heart makes you happy. The one from the mind, right? Because of the bird here now sitting on his left, right? Here, it's sitting on her right. The bird is sitting first on her right, on her left. She's looking forward. And then she decided, no, I, take, I do it from the mental aspect. The mental aspect didn't make you happy. You went back to the three, to the heart, to the happiness, to the enjoying, to being in this community. You love this community that gave you strength, the nectar to find on your path, on your spiritual path. And then you find again the action three of cups and the three of wands, opposite energies to grow and to become your own deep guardian angel the water three of water three of fire water and fire the guardian angel right in between the alchemical transformation from gemini to sagittarius in this moon the covering of the uh the earth coming into the center right it's almost like you are in the center between the moon and the sun and you cover yourself you are doubting yourself sometimes so much that you're covering for 14 minutes the moon and in that you don't know what decision to take. Should I take this one or should I take that one? And then of course you take the one from the mind because you may be not trained to be intuitive. You may be not trained to say, hey, let my heart always speak for what I want. And then you realize, uh -uh, this one doesn't feel right at all. And then here this alchemical transformation is completely saying well there we go now you can go back to the right decision that you maybe could have taken immediately could have taken immediately but you didn't and it's okay because you learned and you grew and you understood and where you're reaching to the king of pentacle right the king of pentacle is taurus right there is a groundedness then that can bring this idea, can bring this decision because you're the earth, to the earth, back to the earth. It is said that if you are not grounded, if you're not down here, if you're constantly up here, if you're constantly going up, 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 right? It's not going to help you because sometimes spirit gives you a message and you need to bring this message down and ground it it up here it's not doing no one good so if you're not yourself knowing that you can block sometimes this celestial movement but you get it and you bring it down and look what it's doing it's making money whatever the idea is whatever the decision is it's the right decision in the end you took you think you took the wrong decision but because you had to take the wrong decision it made you realize that the right one was then in the end right because it felt all of a sudden different it felt liberating it felt amazing it felt like day and night <laughs> It felt like day and night. Day and night is your oracle card, right? Wow, so cool. That's it. There we go. 24 minutes and 44 seconds. 444. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Oh, and I see, of course, the way I placed the card, right? It was like this. I saw four of cups. As a six of cups. And of course, it's relating to the German reading before because this card was in there. Childhood, right? And then you can look, then you can lie on the ground and again, you can dream, you can have your fantasies, you can 
release you can be like happy happy on the ground because the financial situation is taken care of don't we love that all right <laughs> anyway i uh, see you again in the next reading the sun is in cancer right now we're in gemini is in cancer in the chariot in the success so let's see what the success is Thank you so much for watching. Namaste.